The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Paramount Workplace, the procurement partner of choice for BlackBot Financial Edge. I'm Darcy Borio, and our presenter today is Paramount's VP of Sales, Boy Maynard. Today, uh, we're going to talk about nonprofits and how they can benefit from Paramount Workplace if using BlackBot Financial Edge. So for nonprofit organizations to stay financially and legally compliant with all the regulations of their industries, all their purchases and payments must be carefully tracked and reported with complete accuracy and full disclosure. So it's also important to keep the process as efficient, cycle time short, and cost low, as nonprofits depend on strict budgeting to stay afloat. So in this 30-minute webinar today, we're going to show you how Paramount Workplace's mobile and web-based requisition and PO software helps BlackBot financial edge users manage spend to get the most out of those budgeted funds. With that, I will hand it off to Foy. All right, Darcy, thank you very much. So for the webinar today, what we're going to do is walk through a little bit of uh, information about Paramount, talk to you a little bit more detail about the products, focus on some key areas of functionality, some key solutions uh, that we offer as a part of the overall requisition and procurement um, software uh, that we provide. And then we'll actually spend a little bit of time taking a quick look at some of those highlights. Keep in mind, this is a 30 minute webinar. There's a lot of information that we can cover uh, in regards to Paramount as well as our solutions. And certainly we wanna take the time at some point to be able to answer any questions that they're that you might have. So if you don't get all of the information that you need, or if you just get bits and pieces of it here and you want to do a deeper dive, please feel free to reach out to us uh, and we're more than happy to schedule a demo uh, and walk you through and answer those questions. Now, speaking of questions, uh, there is a question uh, window uh, as a part of the webinar. Feel free to type those in uh, as we go and given the time at the end, we'll certainly answer any questions that are input there. So as Darcy mentioned, my name is Foy Maynard and I'm with Paramount Workplace. Now, Paramount's been in business since 1995. So for more than 24 years, we've done spend management solutions. We're headquartered in metropolitan Detroit. I'm actually just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And then we have other remote, primarily sales or channel type people spread out around the US as well as Canada because our support, our quality assurance, our development, and the vast majority of our administration functions are done from our headquarters in that metropolitan Detroit office. And what we've always done since 1995 is spend management solutions today focused on requisition and procurement as it relates to BlackBot Financial Edge. But just so you know, we also do expense for reimbursement purposes as well as AP automation. And we will look at a little bit of the AP automation today and talk about that. But overall, it is mobile and web-based cloud solutions that offer spend management functionality worldwide. We've got more than 131,000 users. We're key in, or one of the key points that we're talking about today is the integration to Financial Edge. So that is a very important part of understanding that we're leveraging the vendors, the GL accounts, as well as other information that's already in Financial Edge as a part of the requisition and purchasing process. But we also can run standalone. Typically, we run standalone environments where it's an ERP that we don't integrate to. Uh, it is somebody that's in transition from one ERP to another, uh, and they need to be able to still manage their spend. But again, a key component of what we're looking at today is the integration that we offer uh, to the back office system. And we can be deployed software as a service. Uh, so depending upon the deployment that you have of Financial Edge, uh, we can certainly accommodate that uh, if you're running the um, FE NXT uh, application, uh, we could also be hosted by a third party. Uh, and then we can also run on premise. So we're not going to restrict you to a single type of deployment. We're going to be flexible based upon your needs and your requirements and still offer the same robust functionality from a spend management side, no matter how you're deployed. And we've always focused on making it easy for employees to enter the information they need to because you want them to be able to do it quickly and get about their regular jobs, but you also want it to be a very effective and efficient process so that you have the approvals that are needed, management can easily approve and keep items moving, and then it's powerful for accounting because of that integration I mentioned a moment ago, but then also because of the visibility that everybody can have based on their security to where the transactions are in the whole entire process. 
And obviously today, because we're focused on Financial Edge, uh, we're going to really talk a lot about nonprofit or not-for-profit organizations and how it fits there. But we also work with many different industries, depending upon um, where you know what industry that you're in. So if for some reason you're watching this and you're not a uh, Blackboard or nonprofit customer, don't worry. As long as you need to be able to manage your spend, we can certainly accommodate that. So we do offer the out-of-the-box integration to Financial Edge. We do support multiple currencies as well as multiple languages for those organizations that may have offices uh, outside of the U.S. and Canada or for those organizations that may be located uh, in other parts of the world. We do annual releases, uh, typically one major release per year based upon our users' feedback, wish list, as well as analyst recommendations of functionality that should be offered. It is a 100% web-based application accessed via multiple browsers, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, as well as Internet Explorer, and also multiple devices because we do offer a mobile app for Apple as well as Android to be able to enter, approve, and have visibility to information anytime, anywhere, quickly and easily. And because of the access to information and security, there are multiple authentication modes that are offered to make sure that you're only getting to see and do what it is you're allowed to based upon who you are within the organization and having access to that information. So these are, these are some key components of requisition and procurement solutions. We talked about some of them already, We'll talk about some more in more detail in here in just a minute, but just know that as we've gone about this for a number of years, these are some key areas to look at and some key areas to focus on. I'm gonna talk about catalogs today because those are a great fit for several different reasons. I'm gonna talk about approvals today because throughout the years, we've seen that as a definitely important component uh, as a part of the overall process. Whether you realize it or know it or not, uh, the flexibility to be able to approve in the manners that we do and some of the other things that we offer as a part of that are very important. And then you see a couple of other areas here that we probably won't get to today, but certainly if there's any questions, we can cover those at a later time. So first off, we're going to talk about catalogs. And the first type of catalog is a guided buying catalog. This is essentially an internal catalog because you as a customer can customize your catalogs by location, by vendor, by type of item, based upon a download that you may get from the vendor or actually just simply creating the catalog on your own. Benefit to this catalog is you create it, so you're responsible for the content and what's there for the users. And also, it's a very simple, easy, common experience for the user as they enter their transactions, pick the items, search for items, build a cart, and ultimately create a requisition. We'll take catalogs to a different level by talking about Punch-Out. So Punch-Out is also a catalog that's made available for the user, specific for a vendor, where you've worked with a vendor, negotiated pricing and items that you want to be available to your users. The vendor maintains the catalog for you as their customer. The user still gets a very simple, easy shopping experience that they're used to in their day-to-day -day lives, and you still get to leverage the approval processes that you've put in place before that purchase order is created. So with Punch-Out, again, the main benefit is that the vendor creates and maintains that for you uh, as their customer. You're working with your vendors, you're negotiating with your vendors, you're interacting with your vendors, which is always important for both of you to be able to get better service from, uh, from the organization. And you extend those catalogs out to mobile devices. So as I mentioned early on, we do support Apple as well as Android with the mobile app so that you're able to enter requisitions via those internal catalogs. You're also able to approve requisitions, free form enter lines on our requisition, as well as have visibility to the history of those transactions. So extend the functionality that's offered within the procurement solution, make it available in a common, simple to use format that users nowadays are familiar with and like to use, and it makes the process more effective, more efficient for everybody involved in the overall process. And approvals. I've, I've been with Paramount for right at 17 and a half years. And when I first started with Paramount, 
you know, the big thing from a procurement or spend management side was how do we stop our users from doing something? How do we keep them from those maverick purchases or from that maverick spend? You know, how how can we route this for approval? How can we hard stop it so that they can't do it? You know, how do we show a warning on the screen? So, you know, in my recollection, it was almost like, uh, you know, from a user experience standpoint, you were more concerned about how do you stop somebody? How do you keep somebody from doing from doing something? And that was a big message, uh, you know, back then. It's still important today. It's actually it's still critical today, but it's not the overall message that we go with. It's not the overall message uh, that we approach customers with. Now it's all about ease of use. How do you make it easier for the user to enter a requisition, easier for them to approve the requisition? How do you make their experience better so that they're more likely to adopt the solution, embrace the solution, and use the solution because obviously if you're taking the attitude of how do I stop somebody from doing something they, you know, they certainly have the opportunity to try to get around the system to try to not use the system whereas you're making it easy so that they don't have to spend a lot of time doing it if you're making it easy by putting it into a familiar format then they're going to be more likely to use it and along those lines I'm not downgrading the approval processes that's actually hugely important you know, I talk to many people all the time day after day and approvals come up because they're limited by their current system to not be able to approve by line item information. So you can't approve by department or you can't approve by GL account or you can't approve by a project manager if there's a project manager involved. You've got to route the entire requisition for approval. You can't be selective, you can't be specific. So we offer line level approval, unlimited levels of approval, unlimited approval paths. So when you need it, you can route for approval because somebody's over budget. You can route for approval because it, of the department, of the GL account, of the dollar amount that's a part of the requisition. And each line can be independent and ultimately either come back together or create their own purchase orders. And then as a part of the approval process, alternates are available when somebody's out of the office or they're gonna be in a meeting all afternoon. Ad hoc approval so that you can add somebody to the approval process uh, that wouldn't typically be there because you want them to see it. Remind approvers that they have something to approve. Bypass levels of approval if they still don't approve it after a certain period of time and allow approvals via email, via the mobile device and make it quickly and easily. So approvals are critical, whether you know it or not. It's, it's seamless to the user, it's transparent to the user, it's actually entering the transactions, but then it's very powerful when you have the capabilities that are offered uh, within the Paramount Workplace application. So some key benefits, just to recap, the, the catalogs are hugely important. Simple, easy, common user experience for the user so that they can enter their transactions and be done. And we're going to look at both catalogs from an internal standpoint as well as a punch out standpoint here in just a minute. Approvals, unlimited levels of approval, unlimited approval paths, approval by line. I mean, I haven't touched on inventory yet, but I'll briefly mention that we also offer inventory as a part of the overall procurement solution so that for consumable inventory, inventory that you're going to use as a part of um, your day-to-day -day business so that you have to create a PO. You can release an item from inventory. You can transfer an item from one location to another. That's another key point of the procurement solution if you need that. And then ultimately, we also look at the transaction codes. We have the ability to have the transaction codes that are set up within Financial Edge be available and be a part of the transactions that are over in the workplace product as those transactions flow through. And there's a link here where you can find out more information, see many of the integration points, as well as download a brochure. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is close my PowerPoint and spend a little bit of time in the actual product itself. So I'm gonna log in as a user. And when you log in as a user of Workplace, you start off on a dashboard. The dashboard has metrics that may be available to the user to provide them with graphical representations of the data. And there's quite a few metrics that are available out of the box. Additional metrics can also be created. And again, those are secure by user. Uh, you've also got catalogs. If you've got catalogs that are available to the user, they can immediately see those. And then you've also got your outstanding transactions where you can see the transactions for you, where they are, what has happened to them, what needs to happen to them, and then drill in and drill down and get more information and more details as needed. So the idea is at a glance, give the user information that's important to them, allow them to find what it is that they need to find. And if you're gonna come in to enter a transaction, 
You'll find a catalog, click on that catalog. Here is an internal guided buying catalog where we're gonna be able to see pictures, description, and pricing of items. We can search for items, categorize items, add items to our cart after we view additional information and additional details as needed, add items to our cart from multiple catalogs. So if you've got access to more than one catalog, go find that catalog and continue to build your cart. And then here is your cart where you can review, update, and then ultimately create a requisition. So we created a requisition with two lines from that internal guided buying catalog. And that's now the valid requisition that ultimately we can add more items to and then submit and have it route for approval. So here on the screen, I also have the ability to go ahead and shop other catalogs, such as a punch out catalog. I've got punch out enabled for both Office Depot and for Amazon. I'll click on Amazon in this particular example. And when I click there, it's gonna go out to the Amazon site. Now this is the Amazon for business site for you as their customer. So you've negotiated with Amazon what items at what price are gonna be available for my users to select. As you can see, it looks just like it would if you logged in from home. So you're able to come in, view the items, pick an item, build your cart, just like you would normally. And then when you're done building your cart, instead of checking out and having that shipped to you, you submit these items for approval. Because a part of the punch out process, Amazon knows that you used a procurement system to do that. And now it pulls the item back onto the requisition. There's our batteries from Amazon. And ultimately, once that's fully approved, it'll create a purchase order. And the purchase order will be sent electronically to the vendor. That will complete the transaction. And then they will ship you those items. You can also duplicate a requisition, pull up a past requisition, duplicate it as new, make any changes, additions, or deletions. You can import a requisition in a CSV template format. You can use a shopping list, which is essentially a favorites list by user, by department, or available system-wide, where you can then go in, pick what you normally would, maybe when you have a new hire coming on board, load those items, make those a part of the requisition, and then shop other lists if needed to continue to add items to the requisition. Just a quick and easy way to have those be available here. You can also attach files. So if you need to be able to attach a file, click on the paperclip at the line level, at the header level, browse and choose those files, describe them, attach them to the requisition. There's an inline attachment view. So you're able to see the attachment here without having to click and drill down. The icon also changes. And you can have attachments at the line level, at the header level, to provide additional information and additional details, in addition to any comments for the vendor or internal comments that you want to add for each line, as well as the GL segments that are available and set up over in Financial Edge. As I mentioned earlier, we look at the transaction codes. So as a part of the overall line entry of the requisition, you're able to have those codes be a part of that line. Now you do have the ability to hide fields, make fields read only, default dies into fields, make fields required, as well as restrict any of the lookups or zooms. So even though I've got all of the fields showing up here, you don't have to have all the fields show up. You've got total control over the information that's available on this particular line. And then ultimately when you're done, you submit. And when you submit, it'll route for approval, unlimited levels of approval, unlimited approval paths, approval at the line level. So if the first line here needs to route for approval to both Lisa and Bob, that's fine. It's going to Lisa because she's the department manager. It's going to Bob because he approved for greater than $1,000. So you'll be able to see the approval path. If there's more than two approvers, you'll see the entire approval path. There's also a log, date, time, and user that'll keep you up to date with what's going on. So that's that visibility or part of that visibility that I mentioned early on. If you've got other items that have different approval processes, or maybe even a process where Lisa just needs to approve it because it's not greater than $1,000, that's fine too. Again, that's part of the flexibility and the approval processes that are available uh, within the actual workplace application. All right, so that's a little bit about the experience of the user. Now, obviously, it submits for approval. An email notification goes out, so you get an email notification letting you know as the approver that you have items that are pending your approval. You can have the attachments go with those emails. 
There's links in the emails. Click on the link to go into the browser and approve or disapprove or reply to this message. And if you reply to the message, there are brackets. Put a Y or an N at the header to approve everything in the email. Put a Y at the line to approve a line. Put an N at the line to disapprove a line. And there are notes to the requester. And those will go in an email and also appear on the log once you send this reply. So you're able to get an email and actually reply to the email to approve or disapprove without logging into the workplace application. Now, you can also do that via your browser. I could have clicked on the link in the email, logged in as my approver here to be able to approve, and then I'd have that process. And then ultimately a PO will be created once it's been fully approved. And you also have the receiving and invoice matching process available within Workplace. So I did all of that via a browser and an email. You also have the ability to use a mobile app. The mobile app allows you to use those internal catalogs. Click, browse, select an item, add items to your cart, shop multiple catalogs, just like we looked at and saw before, add items to your cart. When you're done building your cart, either let that create the cart in Workplace within the browser, and you can process it later, or go ahead and process that cart now and it'll create a requisition from that shopping experience on the mobile app. And we created requisition number 382, and that's now been submitted. You can also approve via the mobile app as well. So you have a to-do list for what you have pending your approval. You can view those details. You can view any attachments. You can approve or disapprove uh, with notes from the mobile app and have those items flow through the process. And you can also view the history of the transactions. So you can view history and see where those transactions are in the process. And that's, again, visibility across the entire process. And now we're doing that from the mobile application um, that we've provided here. So the key points there to look at are those are some key areas of functionality within the workplace application that we find very important to those that are looking to manage their spend. A lot of it has to do with the user experience that I've talked about, the approver's experience, making it quick, easy, effective, and efficient uh, throughout the process. So we're trying to, again, deliver that functionality anytime, anywhere, uh, in a common experience for the user, like what they do in their day-to-day -day lives. Now, we do a good bit more with the approvals once we start talking about purchase orders, change orders, receiving, as well as invoice matching that we're not gonna dive in today. We can certainly cover that at a later period of time, but I did want you to be able to see and understand those key areas. So what I wanna do now is I wanna show you uh, some AP automation uh, that can be a part of the procurement process, meaning that we can do invoices uh, that are related to a purchase order, or we can also do non-PO invoices, and that's what we call a check request, and we can use invoice capture functionality that leverages OCR to be able to gather that information. So I'm going to log in as a user who has our invoice capture queue and this queue can be populated by dragging and dropping invoices into this section here. This queue can also be populated by emailing invoices. So there's a specific email address that is a part of this subscription service that you can email invoices to and when you email those invoices they will also go into the queue and there's also an ftp site that is provided the ftp site will allow you to capture those invoices and then have the queue read those there is an agent that runs in the background the agent can run as often as you like in order to be able to monitor the queue so you don't have to sit here on the screen and look at it like we are right now if you need to make corrections if the invoice capture functionality is not able to read something properly, it will let you know that. If it reads it correctly and it submits it, it'll route for approval and you'll be made aware of that as well. So if you need to make corrections, you'll see that here. Click on make corrections and it's going to open up the OCR window that allows me to see where it gathered the information from. And it also allows me to teach the system where information that is missing might be. So we're looking for an invoice number, so I can go find an invoice number and I can tell it where that invoice number is. If it were missing any other information, I could also make it aware of that information, like if we wanted to have the vendor address here, then I could put the vendor address in there and have that information be entered. If anything else was incorrect, 
I could make those corrections. This system will learn. There is artificial intelligence, machine learning as a part of this process. So as I teach it where the information is, it will ultimately learn that to the point where it'll process it through without having to interact from a user standpoint. So once I've made the corrections that it's looking for, I can then save and close this. And assuming that I did everything that it was asking, it'll now create that transaction in Workplace, submit that for approval so that it can now flow through an approval process. The approver can code that additionally if it needs additional coding, add any other additional information or details before it routes through the remainder of that process. So as soon as this finishes here, in this particular example, we'll go back and look at a transaction that actually flowed all the way through. And then we'll be able to go to our dashboard. And then you see the check request here. So these check requests is what was created for a non-PO invoice. If it had been a PO invoice, it would have created a receipt invoice from what it read, but it will then have that information as a part of the transaction. It will have the invoice on the right-hand side. It will have the information on the left-hand side, and it is now submitted that for approval. Again, the approver has the ability to edit if you allow them to from within the browser, and then they'd be able to edit and continue to route it through the process. So that's what happens with the transaction when it is successful or once you've taught it where the information is. Uh, and then again, if you need to make corrections, you can certainly make corrections there. All right, so in the last minute or so here, I'm gonna go ahead and close that window. Uh, I do wanna show you on our website under the explore section, calculate ROI, we do have a procure to pay calculator. So this will allow you to come in and play around with some numbers. So you can tell the system, how automated your current process is. You can put in what your salary is. We provided an industry average for your reference. You can put in how many approvers you have. Again, we provided industry averages here. And then you can put in, you know, how many of those people do you have? How many requisitions do you do a month? And then also you've got some accounts payable information that you can enter as well, and then put those details in. So once you enter the information, you can click on submit and it will calculate your current cost and what your cost with automation is to show you the savings. So you can see there can be significant savings by implementing a spend management solution. And if you wanna see what those numbers are like after you have a fully integrated purchase to pay solution or change any of the salaries or change any of that information, you can, and then just simply run it again. And there's some additional information as well as infographics that are available to you for you to see there. So with that, I will hop back over to my final slide here so that I can provide you with some contact information. I appreciate everybody's time today. I appreciate you taking the opportunity to look at the solution. Please reach out to us if you want to drill down deeper or have any questions that we don't answer here today. And Darcy, with that, if there's any questions that we can answer in the last minute or two here, uh, I will answer those. And again, thanks everybody for attending. Boy, we do have one question so far. It is, how does inventory fit in with BlackBot and Paramount? Okay, no, thank you. Yeah, I talked a little bit about inventory when I was on my PowerPoint slide, but I didn't drill down too much. So some key things to note about inventory. It needs to be consumable. So you need to be using it. It's not something that you're selling. So one of the best examples that I can think of is we work with an organization that ships first aid kits outside of the U.S., to other countries, they get those first aid kits donated to them. So they don't pay anything or they don't buy those first aid kits, they're donated, but they wanna be able to know how many of the first aid kits that they have. So they have inventory of those first aid kits. They then wanna be able to create a requisition to be able to transfer them from one location to another. So if a particular, um, location needed 10,000 of the first aid kits. They want to know that they shipped 10,000. And then they want to know once it gets to that location, how many actually got there. So there is a requisition process for how many do you need. There's a shipment process of how many do you ship. And then there's a receipt process of how many did you get. So if they ship 10,000, but due to loss for some reason, they only got nine, then they want to know that 9,000 got there. So that would be one example uh, of how a nonprofit you know might use that but again the keywords are consumable inventory for your internal use not something that you're going to resell 
uh, as a part of that. That wouldn't be a part of what we do for inventory, but something that you want to be able to create a requisition for and either release or transfer somewhere else and track it as it goes through the process. So that would be an example. Perfect. Sounds like that answered the question, and I'm not seeing any other questions at this point. So guys, be sure to check out the Procure to Pay Calculator and just put your numbers in there. It's really eye-opening how much money you can save uh, by implementing a solution like Paramount Workplace. And with that, I want to thank you again, uh, everyone, for your time. Thank you, Floyd, for the presentation. And we look forward to talking with you more to see how we can help out. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.